Okay, welcome to this week's uh, weekly watches. These are the pairs I'll go through. Gold, Nasdaq. Uh, I think there's something on here. Uh, not really. So gold, Nasdaq, and then the main pairs that I trade. Uh, we had a couple of losses last week, but that's fine. We can just make up for it this week. So I'll start on gold. And on the weekly time frame, we've got last week's high and low. And it's kind of like a trading range. So obviously we've been going up uh, recently. Still got this wick. We haven't had a strong move off it yet. It's kind of just slowly moved and reacted from it. But on either side of the weekly range, there is a four hour uh, supply and demand zone that I'm looking at. So on the daily time frame, we'll see if there's anything different. Uh, and the other thing you can see is that we still got this daily uh, order block, daily demand zone here, below the week's low. So this is like the inducement um, that's going to get taken out liquidity below here from all the traders that are entering this week, putting their stop loss below the low of last week. And that could be a nice place to uh, target if you're going for sales, uh, or it could be a nice place to just use this inducement uh, above our zone, which is what I'm doing. And then you've also got this daily supply zone. Uh, I don't really like the look at this, because there's going to be liquidity above these equal highs over here. So I can mark that up. And you don't want to trade when there's liquidity above your zone because it's likely things that it's going to get taken out. So this supply zone, even though it looks good, you know, push up and push down, looks like a liquidity sweep. There's some liquidity above it, so I'm going to ignore that. And going down to the 4 hour time frame, we can see then the same uh, supply zone that I was watching last week and the same demand zone. So, you know, we've got liquidity above here and liquidity above the previous week high. So, not liquidity here to be taken out. And um, we could target you know, down here. And we could also maybe potentially get a push down and then a push up. So, those are the two things I'm watching on gold. On Nasdaq, there isn't really any trade idea I don't have. But what we can see, you know, like the weekly you know, price has been pushing up, created a new all time high. Uh, the tech stocks are rallying at the moment. So, Basically, the bias is bullish and there might not be any pullbacks because looking at the technical analysis isn't always enough. Yes, it would be nice if we had a pullback to this demand zone, but the tech stocks are just rallying. And so the Nasdaq is just pushing up and up and no one really knows when it's going to stop. It could stop now and reverse. You can't really tell. But long term bias is obviously bullish, you know, on all uh, stocks and indices. Your long term bias should be bullish. But you can still look for sales, you know, when you have pullbacks like this. Um, but yeah, not much on the weekly time frame. You know, we just have a slight pullback uh, in this week for another push up, creating a new high. And then on the daily time frame, there was some imbalance here. Uh, price didn't pull back into. Uh, you know, you had this pullback, strong push up, a little bit of a pullback. And then uh, on the lower time frame, I'll show you this demand zone was respected, and then price pushed up again. So we've got this uh, daily demand zone that price could come back into, which would be a nice trade for this week. Actually, just go back and mark up. The previous week of low and high, what I should do, you can see that it is actually the origin of uh, the last week. So we get pulled back to there, that could be a nice trade entry. Uh, and maybe I'll set limits actually. Uh, if we go down to the 4 hour time frame. Yeah, so actually, the reason I didn't set limits is because it's not really a clear demand zone. You can see this clear demand zone, the price push down, push up, there's imbalance, um, strong momentum, a bullish and for candle. Inducement above the zone, price tapped into it and then pushed up. But within here, there isn't really any clear area that could be a nice demand zone. You've got this area here, but there's no imbalance above it. And if we get some inducement, then maybe I'll set limits. Or what I'll likely do is just set an alert and look for a lower time for entry. So I'll do that and I'll keep you updated. And if you see any uh, trading setups, then you can let me know as well. That's Nasdaq on the AUD USD. On the weekly time frame, you know, price, uh, I'll get into this in a minute, but price has been pushing down. We've got previous week high and low, and it took out uh, this low over here, which is where um, our stop loss was, or my stop loss was. And so maybe price is going to uh, continue up, but it could also take out this low and go into this zone here. And we've got this supply zone just to look out for as a potential target. There's liquidity above it, so I wouldn't trade from it unless we get confirmation. So I'll set alerts there, and maybe I mean, it's on the weekly time frame, so we'll leave it. I don't need to set alerts yet, because it'll probably be a couple of weeks before you go back into that. But nothing else on the weekly time frame, really, on the daily time frame. So this is the area that I was looking to go long from. And there's also this daily demand zone here, right below uh, this low. So even though we took out liquidity here, it wasn't really a very strong uh, 
sweep of liquidity, you know, didn't push down and then push up. That would be nice if it was into this zone and we could look for longs. But instead, I'm going to be looking for price to take out this for the previous week low, uh, tap into this daily demand zone, and then I'll look for a four hour uh, confirmation entry. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And you can just target previous week high or target this weekly supply zone. So that's what I'm looking at on AUDUSD. You know, potentially we could also get a push down lower to this demand zone over here. So you just need to be able to adapt and see what happens. But then on EURUSD, same trade as uh, last week. Nothing like you can see this week, uh, the previous week just kind of ranged. You know, uh, didn't actually tap into our zone, but it created more inducement, which is nice. So obviously still got this daily uh, weekly demand zone that price tapped into, push up, having a pullback, and now expecting another push up. So on the daily time frame, you can see a strong push down into this area. You really had strong push up there within some imbalance. Price tapped into that. Reacted from it, created more imbalance over here. Then three strong bullish candles, you know, growing in size, growing in momentum. Created a new high and then slow pullback, which is nice. Created some inducement right above our zone. And then we're going to expect price to, hopefully this week, tap into the trade. And if everything goes well, then it will make up for the losses recently. And we had four losses and one win. So I'm at break even uh, minus costs. But that's not what I'm expecting. Um, you don't want to be break even. So we'll see what happens here uh, on your USD. But the entry is the same as last week, if you didn't see it, just this uh, demand zone. A bit risky because stop loss maybe could be placed more safely down there. But for the risk reward, this is my setup. Then GBP USD, I think, is the same. There isn't really much uh, else has changed. You know, price has been pushing up. We're just ranging in this week. You know, when price is doing this, you can get some nice trades. Um, but when price is just ranging, you can go weeks without actually getting a nice setup because price just doesn't really know where it wants to go. It's the start of the year. There's a lot of indecision. But it's the same setup as last week. You know, lots of inducement here now. We did get a liquidity sweep over here. You know, these lows, price tap, push down and then push up. So it could react from there. But for me, this is more likely inducement for our four hour zone. But it's here. So again, if this trade plays out, that'd be nice. But all we need is one of them to play out and make up for any losses. Then on USD CAD, I think this is a setup that, yeah, uh, is new. So we have tapped into this, uh, I think it's a daily demand zone, uh, but there's also this weekly supply zone. You can see this uh, bullish candle for the strong bearish candle. So this is the supply zone, the bearish order block on the weekly time frame, And there's a potential target, you know, target the previous week low or target this uh, supply zone, this demand zone, sorry, you see here. The bearish candle before the strong push up. So we have a strong push down and then a strong push up. Looks like a little pity grab, but we could be able to catch a nice uh, trade from this zone here. So on the daily time frame, you might be able to see it a bit clearer. You can see the weekly supply zone could be refined to this daily supply zone. And there's some inducement, you know, right below our zone with the previous week high. A uh, nice little bit of liquid liquidity above there. This is always liquidity below previous week low and above previous week high. So that's something you can look out for and just mark up on the charts. And there's also liquidity above uh, previous day's highs and previous low, uh, previous day lows. So if you're trading on the lower time frames, then you can use that as a kind of uh, setup. So everything I do on like the weekly, the daily, then the four hour, you could do on like the daily, the four hour and the five minutes, or something like that. Because the time frame is a fractal. So everything that happens on like a higher time frame will happen on the lower time frame. It's just when you trade on the lower time frame, the uh, trading costs due to spreads are a bigger percentage of your actual trade so this is harder to be profitable on those time frames uh, and then going down to the four hour time frame you can see nothing's really happened there's no really clear zone in the previous week range uh, but there is this four hour supply zone this nice last point of supply uh, before the strong push down so hopefully you can get a return to that zone and then price will continue down i put my stop loss just above the highs just to be safe because there's no clear liquidity sweep with this zone, so price could come up just above it and then push down. There's maybe some liquidity um, above these highs, but all in all, the zone and setting setup looks good for me and because we have liquidity sweep over here, and there's just some order flow, some bearish order flow. Uh, so that's what I'm expecting on USD CAD. Then onto USD CHF. Uh, there isn't really anything here. It hasn't been for a while. Uh, you know, price pushed down and now it's rallied a bit. So last week we did have a strong push up. So maybe expect a pullback and a push up again. And on the daily time frame, again, there's not much. 
maybe we could have a pullback just to the imbalance. I'll leave it red for now so you can see it's the imbalance. Um, but you can see the difference between previous weeks and uh, last week where we had push up, push up all, all the days pretty much. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday kind of slowed down. But onto the 4 hour time frame. There isn't much, so maybe we could have a pullback actually to um, the start of these zone, one of these demand zones. But none of them look particularly uh, different to the others, and none of them taking out liquidity. And so it's, I'm unsure where price will actually pull back to, but we can mark it up and see if we get a nice pullback to somewhere in this area and then look for confirmation on a lower time frame, maybe. But looking up here, you know, we did have some order flow. There's this uh, demand zone here, price pushed up, had a pullback, and then pushed up, created another demand zone, and price could react from it. And so I was looking at this for a potential trade, but trying to trade at the week's high, the previous week's high, to go long is just a bit more risky because there hasn't been a pullback and there's potential for that. So even if there's a lot of buying power in this zone that could push price up, it might not actually lead, actually lead to anything. And the risk reward, you know, if you're just going here, stop loss below there and targeting the previous week high, it's only 1 to 1.5, which is still all right. But for me, it's a bit too risky. So I'll leave that and I'll just mark this up just to just to watch. Then onto USDJPY. There's really not much here either as well. We are still tapped into this daily demand zone, a weekly demand zone, sorry. And we've got another weekly uh, demand zone over here that we could be watching. And then previous week high and previous week low marked up and price has been pushing up, potentially looking to take out this high. So that could be a target. I'll look for, look for a pullback and go along. My bias is uh, bullish, but it is where are we going to get into the trade, basically. And you see on the daily time frame, we've had some order flow here, which is nice. You got this demand zone here, price pushed up, left some imbalance there, pulled back into it and then pushed up again. And there isn't really imbalance above the zone, but there's I mean, there's balance over here, but not right above the zone. Or maybe there's a tiny bit, so maybe maybe yeah, I think there's a tiny bit of imbalance uh, above this zone. And there's imbalance above there, so that's good confirmation, not the best, but still good confirmation. And we've been disrespecting supply zones, so this supply zone's been broken through. Um which shows that the order flow is bullish. And then onto the four hour time frame. That's why there isn't really a clear zone on here to enter from. But potentially we could enter risky from, well not risky, but just enter from the daily time frame. I'll have a look at the risk reward of this. And we can see that looks like an all right trade um, that I might take. Uh, if I send it through to yeah, uh, if I send it through to the group, then I will take it. If not, then I just ignore it. But on to New Zealand USD, uh, yeah. So this is a trade lost again. And the weekly, I'll just quickly show why it lost or not why it lost. But the reason I entered the trade was bullish order flow. You know, we respected this four-hour demand zone, and then respected and was hoping to respect this four-hour demand zone that took out liquidity and had a strong push up. Um, and there was a lot of buying power in here. You know, price was coming down. And then when it got into this zone, people kept buying and buying, but there wasn't enough buying power and it must have been another supply zone that got tapped into that meant people were trying to sell now and the, the selling power was greater than the buying power and so price just broke through. In this case, sometimes you will lose trades and we can do a fresh analysis now. So price has been pushing up and you know, this demand zone here got respected. And so potentially we could look for a refinement of this uh, weekly demand zone as well. So you know, price has reacted maybe from somewhere in here. Either way, you know, we've been bearish market structure. Uh, this is the low, this is the high, there's another low. And then we broke above this high, had a change character, and now we're looking to go long. Um, but maybe price has also reacted from some area here. So I'll mark that up on the higher time frame and just look to see if there's a lower time frame zone that actually caused that push down. And then the other thing I see that I'll mark up is just this supply zone over here. But could be a nice uh, place to get short entries from or a nice place to target. Then on the daily time frame, even though it isn't really clear, you can see just the last bullish candle before the push down. It does look like a liquidity sweep, you know, strong push up, took out these highs over here and then price returned to it and it's now going bearish. You can see we've got this bullish market structure and now it's changed to kind of bearish, especially when it broke this low. And so maybe price is going to push down all the way or maybe it will react from potentially this daily demand zone, which looks like a nice place to uh, enter from.
and this is what I will be looking for uh, next then. I guess I might even set limits uh, when we get closer. If we get some nice inducement above the zone, we can set limits there and then target up there. That'll be a very nice trade. But there isn't really anything else I see on the four hour time frame of New Zealand USD. No clear uh, supply zones. Here we got this one that was reflected. Actually, I say that uh, I potentially missed this trade now, but this supply zone got respected. And then there was another supply zone over here. It wasn't clear, so I probably wouldn't enter straight from it, but maybe there was, you can get a lower time frame entry uh, in one of the one of the uh, kill zones. But that's not how I trade, so I'll leave that for now. I'll just mark it up for analysis. That's all the pairs that I've looked at. If you want to look at something else, then let me know when I can. But otherwise, have a good trading week.